Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at asset bases and indicators and we're continuing to discuss on properties of acids and especially the chemical properties of acids. Uh, previously we talked about the physical properties of acids and bases and we compared some of those uh, properties and then also we introduced the one of the physical uh, chemical properties of acids which was the reaction of acids with metals and we said that acids react with metals to produce a salt and hydrogen gas and we said that we were able to test that hydrogen gas using a burning splint and it's burned to the pop sound and then the salt is also produced depending on the acid that is used we said the most suitable uh, metal is zinc and the most suitable acid is hydrochloric acid so today we are going to look at more properties of acids and the pro property we are going to discuss today is the neutralization of uh, bases this is a reaction between acids and bases so when acids and bases usually react they form a product that is salt and water as the only product and this uh, product or this process is usually referred to as neutralization. So the product is salt and water. In the previous lesson, we talked about the salt, which is a, comes from a derivative of the acid. The same is going to apply in this reaction as well. But the only difference now is we produce water instead of hydrogen gas. Um, and instead of hydrogen gas. So this is a general equation. Acids react with bases or alkalis to form salt and water. Remember we said alkalis are usually the soluble bases, the ones that can dissolve in uh, water. We have bases that are not that soluble. So the ones that are not soluble, we don't refer them as alkalis. But in either case, those bases will also react with acids as well to form salt and water. Um, so we are going to look at the experiment. Uh, examples are hydroxides. So when it comes to bases, we have oxides and hydroxides. So you start with the hydroxides. An example is sodium hydroxide. When you react sodium hydroxide with dilute hydrochloric acid, you form the salt. And you see this is a derivative of the acid and water only. So in this reaction, we are usually use... Um, Phenolphthalein indicator as the one to indicate the end point. So what you notice in, the re in this reaction, the sodium hydroxide is usually in solution state and it's colorless. It's aqueous in, in nature and then hydrochloric acid is aqueous in nature as well and colorless. If you mix these two, you are not able to, to tell if the reaction is complete without having an, something to indicate that the reaction is complete. And we use phenolphthalein for that purpose. Phenolphthalein usually helps us to tell when the end point is reached. So how do you tell the end point is reached? So we know phenolphthalein is colorless in acidic solution and colorless in neutral solution. So we are reacting a base in which the phenolphthalein turns pink with an acid which is colorless in phenolphthalein. So when these two mix and you add the uh, phenolphthalein indicator, when the reaction is going on, it produces sodium hydroxide and water which are neutral in nature. So initially you start with a pink um, uh, in basic solution at the end of the reaction because neutral products are being formed the uh, color of the phenolphthalein will turn to colorless. So we are starting with pink because of the base as the reaction continues uh, with the acid it forms neutral products and those neutral products are the ones that turn the uh, phenolphthalein indicator to colorless. So the moment you see it turning to colorless, it means that we have reached at the end point of this reaction. So the equation for the general equation for this reaction is sodium hydroxide. It reacts with hydrochloric acid to form sodium chloride and water. You can see sodium chloride. The chloride is a deri derivative of the acid, and the rest is just the formation of water.
so you know also we can be able to test for this water that is being produced but in this case is we are not going to be able to test it because it is a mixture of a solution if it was being produced in form of a steam we could be able to test for that presence of the water so let's look at oxides as well oxides are also bases uh, they can dissolve in water to uh, be soluble to form alkalis and some of them do not dissolve in water. So when also this reacts with acids, they actually form uh, salts and water. They also form a neutralization reaction. Let's take an example of uh, uh, zinc. So if you have zinc oxide, we can react zinc oxide with hydrochloric acid and see the products that we are going to form. So when you react zinc oxide with hydrochloric acid, you're going to form a zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. Let's look at another example. If you react uh, copper oxide, for example, with um, uh, we can use uh, copper oxide with hydrochloric acid because we do not want to use copper oxide with sulfuric acid. Uh, we can also use copper oxide with sulfuric acid and but we cannot use copper oxide with nitric acid because we said nitric acid is a very strong oxidizing agent so it oxidizes uh, the reaction uh, so let's use uh, the copper oxide so you react copper oxide with hydrochloric acid so it will react to form copper chloride and water next we are going to use um, we can use magnesium oxide with uh, nitric acid and you see that magnesium oxide reacts to form magnesium nitrate and water and then finally we can use uh, sulfuric acid so we are going to react copper oxide with sulfuric acid so those are some of the examples of reactions of oxides with acids you can uh, Practice more on different uh, oxides with different acids and, and be able to see what the products they form. And remember the salt is usually formed as a derivative of the acid. So this brings us to the end of this session. So in the next session, we are going to be looking at other properties of acids. That is the reactions of acids with carbonates and hydrogen carbonates. And we are going to see how this reaction is going to occur. So have a good day. I'll see you in the next session.